everyone. My name is Miss Rachel. You are live from Coral Springs, Florida. We have some guests with us. They're really just my three boys. I am the children's ministry director at First Presbyterian Church, and I'm so glad you're joining us today. I think we have some friends joining us from Iowa, from New York, definitely from Florida, and I'm so glad we get to worship together today. You are also a guest in my classroom. I teach children in China how to learn English. And this is where I teach every morning. So we kind of change things around a little bit so you get to worship with us this morning. Before we get started, I'd love to pray with you. So please join me in prayer. Father God, I thank you so much for this morning, Lord. I thank you that your mercies are new every morning, that we have the gift of fellowship, Lord, and the gift of worship as we act out um, this act of worship together, Father, from all across the country, Lord. I thank you for the boys and girls that are listening and watching along with us. I pray for our country right now, Lord, as um, we learn how to use technology to um, interact with each other. And um, Lord, as we gather together in prayer for our country during this time, be with us right now in this moment, Lord. We just, um, we thank you, Father, for your son Jesus and for the opportunity to spread the word of Jesus through Facebook and we just pray right now for this lesson Lord and that um, it would be a blessing to you in Jesus name we pray amen amen all right well if you love to sing we'd love for you to join us now we are gonna sing a song together this is called leaning on the everlasting arms so if you're not standing up stand up with us come on boys stand up This is Kenny and Christopher. Lincoln, do you want to come up real quick? No. Okay, you'll see Lincoln in just a second. Here's Kenny. And what's your name? Christopher. Oh, Christopher, I almost forgot. This is Christopher, Kenny. You'll see Lincoln in a little bit. And Henry is trying to nap, but he may not make it all the way through, so we'll see. At FPC, our church here in Coral Springs, Florida, we have been learning about the alphabet using the Bible. And last week was the letter S, and this week is going to be the letter T. Yes, the letter T. So this is our letter T bag. And we're gonna think about some things that start 
with the letter T. Can you think of some things that start with the letter T? Mm. Can we think of a food that starts with the letter T? What do you think, Kenny? Tomato! Oh, did you peek in the bag? I think Kenny peeked in the bag a little bit, but that's okay. Yes, tomato. No, this is not real. Tomato. Okay, let's think of some other things. Lincoln, can you think of something that starts with the letter T? Let's see if Christopher can help you. Can you think of more things that start with the letter T? Christopher? Train! Yes! I actually happen to have a train. Thomas the train. Very good. What are some things that are out in nature that start with the letter T? Here in Florida, they're green. But maybe where you are, they are not green. I know. What do you think? What's something you like to climb when it's nice and warm out? Lincoln, can you think of it something? A ladder. A ladder? That's a good guess. But ladder starts with the letter L, like Lincoln. Tree. Tree. Yes, a tree. Very good. And I have, oh no, my tree fell apart. <laughs> oh no. I don't know if my tree's, oh, there we go. I have one more, oh, two more things that start with the letter T. I bet you're not going to guess this one. It's in very high demand at stores you can't find any. <laughs> Adults are getting really weird about buying this. Yay! Hey, toilet paper! You know, we have an Aunt Kelly in Pennsylvania who's encouraged everyone and has told them that right now as you're staying at home, you should keep a journal each day, which I think is such a great idea of what you've done, about some things that you've seen at home, or maybe if you go to the store. I know I want to keep a journal, and I want to put how I can't find toilet paper anywhere. These adults are going crazy. I have one more thing. This is a word that starts with the letter T. You want to take a guess, Kenny? Can you guess too? What starts with the letter T? Tape. Tape? Okay, table. Tape does start table. Those are all good T words. This is a word that we can find in the Bible. Trust. Yeah. Today, we're going to learn about trust. We're going to be reading from either Mark chapter 4, or you can look at Matthew chapter 8. And we're just going to read two verses today before I switch over to my Jesus Storybook Bible. Maybe you have this Bible at home. If you do, while well, I'm reading from God's word, if you want to go grab it, we're going to be reading from this story together. This is Mark chapter 4, verse 39. He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Let's pray together. Father God, before we start this lesson, Lord, of your word, I just pray, Father, that these will be your words and not mine, Father, and that these boys and girls that are watching together, Lord, will um, learn how to trust in you, Lord, even when they're afraid and when they feel like they do not understand what's going on, Lord. We need to trust you that you are in control. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, like I said, this is the Jesus Storybook Bible. And it's one of the Bibles that we use when we teach our four and five year olds and our kindergarten first and second graders at our church. And we also are going to, hopefully it works, we'll see. Mm. We're also going to have the pictures up on our screen. Um, Zonder Kids? Yes, Zonder Kids <laughs> is the publisher. That's who wrote and put together this Bible. Wow. And so we are going to have the pictures up on the screen while Miss Rachel reads. Let's see if I can do this. It doesn't work. I think it's going to work. <laughs> if you don't have the Bible, that's why I wanted to put the pictures up on the screen for you so you can follow along with us. I'm just gonna almost done lowering the volume here. Okay, there what? we go. No volume. So this 
story is titled The Captain of the Storm. And we're going to be reading on page 236, if you have your Bible with you. The Captain of the Storm, the Storm of the Lake, from Mark 4 and Matthew 8. The sun was going down. The air was warm and still. Let's go across to the lake, Jesus said to his friends. Jesus had been helping all day, and now he was tired. So they left the crowds at the shore and set out in a small fishing boat. Have any of you ever gone fishing before? Yeah. Oh, yes. Have you gone fishing in a boat maybe at a lake? No. Uh, you know you have to be very quiet and the water has to be very still. Yeah. Yes, to catch fish. So they left the crowds at the shore and set out in a small fishing boat. Jesus climbed into the boat to take a nap. Have you ever taken a nap on a boat before? No. It's kind of like sometimes in a car, either you get kind of sick or it puts you to sleep. And Jesus had been talking and he was so tired. So he climbed in to take a nap. As soon as his head touched the pillow, he fell fast asleep. It was a beautiful evening. A gentle breeze rustled the sails. The friends were chatting happily as they headed out into the middle of the lake. Everything was perfect for a nice, quiet sail. They were only about halfway across when out of nowhere, whirling winds swept across the lake, fierce and strong, like a hurricane. We know about hurricanes, don't we? Yes, we know all about hurricanes. Mm. A blinding flash of lightning, crash, <laughs> lit up the sky. Thunder roared overhead. The storm blew the water into towering okay. waves that hurled the little boat up, 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 then sent it hurtling, crashing back down, down, down. The fishing boat was blown and buffeted and tossed and turned back and forth, left and right, round and round. And in the middle of the storm, Jesus was sleeping. What? Now, Jesus' friends had been fishermen all their lives. But in all their years fishing on this lake, they had never once seen a storm like this one. No matter how hard they struggled with their ropes and sails, they couldn't control their boat. The storm was too big for them. But the storm wasn't too big for, for Jesus. Jesus. Help! They screamed. Wake up! Wake up quick, Jesus! Jesus opened his eyes. Rescue us! Save us! They shrieked. Don't you care? Jesus cared. And this was the very reason he had come. To rescue them and to save them. Jesus stood up and spoke to the storm. Hush, he said. That's all. And the strangest thing happened. The wind and the waves recognized Jesus' voice. They had heard it before, of course. It was the same voice that made them in the very beginning. Do the wind and the waves recognize your voice? No. no. You mean if I told the wind and the waves to stop, they wouldn't listen? No. Oh, that's disappointing. Yeah. Well, the wind and the waves listened to Jesus. And they did what he said. Immediately, the wind stopped and the water calmed. It glittered innocently in the moonlight and lapped quietly against the side of the boat as if nothing had happened. The little boat bobbed gently up and down. There was a deep stillness and a great quiet all around. Then Jesus turned to his wind-torn friends. Why were you scared? He asked, did you forget who I am? 
Did you believe your fears instead of me? Jesus' friends were very quiet, as quiet as the wind and the waves. And into their hearts came a different kind of storm. What kind of man is this? They asked themselves anxiously. Even the winds and the waves obey him? They didn't understand. They didn't realize yet that Jesus was the Son of God. Jesus' friends had been so afraid. Hi. They had only seen the big waves. They had forgotten that if Jesus was with them, they had nothing to be afraid of. No matter how small their boat or how big their storm. And I want you to remember that too, that no matter what, even if it's not real storm outside, maybe it's something you're scared of, maybe it's something you can't see, maybe it's something you can't touch. Does that mean God and Jesus forget about us? No! No, no that means we have to have what? Trust. We need to trust in God. We need to trust that the God who created the whole earth and the Jesus who quieted the storm is going to be there for us no matter what. So today I also have a craft. Each week at our church we do a song with our kids, we do Bible story, we do a craft and a snack. Sorry guys, no snacks. You might have to ask mommy and daddy at home. I don't know about your mom. But we're going to make a craft together. So, Lincoln, will you come over here and help me over here? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Come over here. Come over here. Here. Okay, you're going to stand right here. And the boys are going to bring their... I don't want to wear my door. You don't have to use your stool. You're okay. You can stand right here. Okay, this is a funnel. So these are some things that you probably have at your house already. Um, I have water bottles for everybody. This one's mine. I've done nothing to it yet. So we're gonna use this one first and I'm gonna show everybody together. Then I have some baby oil. <laughs> so if you have a baby in your house or a mommy, you probably have this. If you don't have baby oil, you can try vegetable oil. It's almost kind of like a little science experiment, but we're going to make a little ocean, a little sea in a water bottle. Yeah. What do you think? Good. Good? Okay. And we're going to add some different things inside of it. You can make it how you want at home. As always though, don't just go raiding your pantry at home. Make sure you ask mommy and daddy or grandma and grandpa or whoever the adult is in the house. Ask them for the supplies. Trust me, it'll save you from some trouble. So we are going to use some baby oil in mine, but like I said, you can use vegetable oil. And we are gonna use some blue food coloring. That's the first thing we're gonna do, okay? What color is this gonna make the water? Blue. blue. Not red? No. Oh, blue, okay, let's see if you're right. Not the red. So I'm just going to do four drops. You could do three if you want it to be a lighter blue or five if you want it to be darker. Maybe I'll just do three. Okay, so three drops. I'll put my cap on and just give it a little shake. All right, so we've got some blue water. Now we're going to add my baby oil. If you can see, I filled my water up a little bit more than halfway into the water bottle. And now we're gonna add some, oop, might get a little messy. I meant to bring paper plates for underneath the bottle, but that's okay. So if you can see, Christopher, can you sit on your bottom? I'm adding baby oil. Is it mixing? Yeah. <laughs> Does that look like it's mixing to you? Yeah. yeah. Really? What's that right there? Mommy, water. That's the baby oil. Water. Because you see water and oil, they don't mix. mix. <laughs> no, they don't. And really, if we Daddy. wanted to spend more time, we could make this into a science lesson about why. But for time's sake, 
we're just going to talk about making our sea here. Okay, Whoa. so I'm going to add the rest of the oil. Now I think you can really see it. Is it mixing? No. No, right? Does that look like it mixed together, Lincoln? No. No. I have the oil on top and my blue wa water down at the bottom. Oh, thanks, Lincoln. Okay, so now I have some glitter. I'm using silver. If you don't have glitter at home, that's okay. This is still going to work. But I like it because it looks really pretty inside, and we're going to talk about why it would be nice to make some glitter in here, too. So I'm using silver glitter, and I'm using a funnel. If you don't have a funnel, you can also take a piece of paper and make it into, like, a cone, and then drop it in. Okay, so there goes my... I don't Glitter. See oh, yeah, I see it. Okay, I'm going to put the cap back on. Nah, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Okay, now, you got to really shake pretty hard. Ready? Shake, just like the waves the disciples were on. Ah! Why is it so fast? And we're going to let it calm down. Our beautiful sea. It looks like it's all mixed together, right? But think about this. Just like Jesus calmed the ocean, our sea in a bottle here is going to slowly start to calm. And this is a great way, believe it or not, for us to pray. If you get nervous or if you get scared or worried, find your sea in a bottle. Shake it up, just kind of like how you're feeling, Mommy. and then set it down. And once you set it down, we're going to pray. And you pray, and when you finish praying, you'll start to see that the bottle has calmed down, just like Jesus calms our hearts and calms the storms in our life. So let's pray, okay? Dear God, we thank you for this short time that we've had together. Thank you for your word and how it teaches us even thousands of years later, Lord, that no matter what the storm is in our life, God, the Bible tells us and teaches us and is still real to us, Lord, just as you are still real to us. I thank you for these boys. I thank you for the boys and girls that are listening, Lord, and, and watching with us. I pray that they may come to know Jesus, Lord, in a real way and have a relationship with him that they would understand that Jesus will calm their hearts and calm the storms in their life if they trust in him. Thank you, Lord, for this time together. Thank you for something as simple as a sea in a bottle to remind us to trust you to calm our hearts. Be with all the boys and girls, Lord, today as they spend time with their families, as they spend time with their families over the next week or two. Um, that this would just be a great chance for them to play outside, to read their Bibles, and to trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, look at that. Our sea oh. has calmed and has separated back. Pretty cool, huh? Uh -huh. All right. Well, now we are going to probably say goodbye, and I'm going to let my boys make their sea in a bottle with me because I have a feeling it could get pretty messy. Thank you so much for joining us. I pray for, I pray that wherever you are today, that you take that minute to read your Bible and be with your family. And I'm so thankful we got to do this. This is so much fun. All right, everybody say bye. Bye. bye.